Coming to you live from the JRE Tobacco Aladino Mobile Studios, it's the Cigar Pulpit. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm the Bishop of the Bird, Nick. And it's apparently a Cigar Authority Week here at the pulpit because I'm joined today by Dave Garofalo. How you doing? Yes, Dave? I'm doing good. And I, I heard that you thought that uh, maybe if you bring us on all the time, uh, you will get number two in the rating slot. <laughs> well, you know that that was that was Jonathan's idea. Now yes. I, I just I just want to advocate for the fact that you know if I'm coming in fourth behind none, then that should bump me up to third. But you know. It's kind of like uh, no answer. Let's see, let's see what happens. There you go. There you go. Well, thank you so much for taking time out. I I messaged you because I, I did want to talk to you and everything, but I, I didn't think that we'd get this done so quick. So this works out well. Pull it off like a Band-Aid. You said whenever you can do it tomorrow. <laughs> and you said, yeah, that works for me. Okay. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about events and uh, probably all kinds of other stuff, too. But I wanted to talk about uh, shop events, store events, um, just events in general. And I figured, you know, I know a guy who wrote a book on that. So I probably mm. ought to like, you know, reach out to him for 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 that. So um, but first, we're going to smoke. So, Dave, what are you smoking today? Uh, I thought I'd celebrate. And uh, but I, I just grabbed it right here at, at the trade show this year. We released uh, United Cigar released uh, La Giana 30th anniversary. So uh, this is it here, and it's a baba pole. It has two different wrappers on it, San Andreas and a natural um, with the La Giana um, tweak blend. Uh, so La Giana celebrating 30 years. Gianna, my daughter, uh, when she was born, I made the brand. It's been out there ever since. We're talking about a cigar brand that came out in 1994, under $10 per cigar, and here it is 30 years later under ten dollars per cigar um, so we put the limited release out and uh, that is a twelve dollar cigar but um, that had a lot to do with um, the workmanship to put it to put into it but uh, we always try to keep uh, that brand along with uh, a lot of brands able for regular people to end up smoking it's a regular person's brand yeah, Gianna, and and uh, as we talked about a little bit before the show started, I ended up writing a uh, editorial about mm -hmm. the rising prices of cigars because it was actually uh, making me angry the past couple of years. Um, I don't want the industry to get ruined, and um, you know, at the trade show, uh, seeing these twenty dollar, hundred dollar, hundred fifty dollar, three hundred dollar cigars, uh, sickening. Um, and La Giana actually made a plan to actually uh, be at the trade show and put a limited release cigar out that would be priced that low. Uh, no. so $12 is a limited release. So uh, that's what I'm celebrating with. I'll tell you, could we have got more for it? Of course. Uh, but that, that's not what it's about. It's a celebration and, and not a money grab, right? It's, yeah. There's a difference between the two. No, I love it. I love it. And I look forward to trying one. And then I am smoking the West Tampa Tobacco Black, which was the parishioner's choice of Cigar of the Year for 2022. And we're going to get that thing fired up. But first, it's time to do the official cut. Brought to you by Dave the Man Ponder over there at Riverman Cigar Company. And guys, the weather is turning nice in St. Louis. So if you're in the St. Louis area, it's a good time to swing on by Dan's place. Find some nice cigars. Either sit out on your deck, sit out under his 1,500 square foot covered patio. You know, let the let the nice uh, environment kind of kind of give you a nice smoking environment. Or um, you know, the basketball is over with, I believe now. But uh, I, you can tell how much of a college basketball fan I am that I'm questioning that. But uh, there's always something good going on over at Riverman. He's always got you know soccer games. We got the St. Louis soccer team playing now. We've got. Uh, you know, the uh, what is it? XFL, the Battle Hawks. They, they've started their season. So, you know, if you're hanging out and you want to hang out in the lounge and watch a game, Dan the Man Ponder over there at Riverman Cigar Company. He's got you covered. And he does mail order so you can give him a call and get cigars shipped to you right away. It's Dan the Man Ponder, Riverman Cigar Company. And it's time to go ahead now and cut my cigar. There you go. Yeah, I didn't uh, talk to Dan in a long time. We used to do those clubhouse 
uh, things during the week and, and Dan would get on and I would talk to him. I was hoping to maybe bump into him at the PCA trade show. He was in those. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't go again this year. Uh, so, uh, so I haven't seen know. him talk to him, but he's doing well. He's doing well. Good. Good. Doing well. And, uh, you know, everything's been nice over there. He got in, uh, I know he put in a couple of orders, for, uh, for PCA stuff. Um, but I, I'll, I'll admit I haven't been by there in about a week and a half or so. So, um, I need to probably get by there, but low for me to Dan, give, give him my best. I will let him know that. Yeah. Um, and on a cold draw, cold draw of this West Tampa to Now here's the thing. I have a couple of these sitting around, but I got this out of a humidor that I'm not entirely sure how old this one is. This one I may have bought at your place in 2022 oh. when I was up for the anniversary party. So this one might be, um, you know, eh, not quite two years old. So, um, but it's got a little bit of a chocolatey kind of component to the to the cold draw there that I'm picking up. But that also might be my coffee. So that was know. in our contenders for the cigar of the year. Uh, uh, it was uh, just beat out, um, but I think it was a great choice uh, by y'all guys. Anyway, still sells like crazy. There's a red mm-hmm. version of that now. Um, which is another great, great cigar. So uh, West Tampa did a good job. They're, they're priced right in at $10. I think uh, very fair price uh, and, and a great cigar. And we're talking about a company that's only a few years old now, uh, but they're, they're hitting it on all directions, I think. You know, and, and Ricky's just been the nicest guy for me to deal with. Um, but, uh, you know, I know you talk on your show a lot about, uh, and I think you've even got a show coming up with Eric Newman, about passing the torch and you mm-hmm. know the next generation and everything. Yeah. Have you have you talked or met with his daughter Sarah? Yes. She was She's... at the expo. She okay. The expo with her dad, and um, during uh, dinner when we eliminate a, a group, we bring the manufacturer on, and Rick said, "Go ahead," and he sent her up in, instead. Which, yeah. Uh, to the applause of the audience, because she's a <laughs> pretty girl to begin with. For uh, sure. She has her head straight on. She's smart as she is pretty. And, um, you know, again, he's only a few years in, but he's, he's up there in age uh, as I am. And I've known Rick for, oh, my God, the beginning of his career uh, with General Cigar. And um, it, w- it was amazing to me that he was going to start new um, as, as late, at, late in his career as he was. But um, I believe that he's doing it for other reasons. He's doing it for her. Uh, it seems like it. But, yeah. but I mean, she has been nothing but um, awesome for me to deal with because she helps coordinate a lot of uh, the interviews that I've had with Rick and things like that and everything. But she's she's been fantastic. It is so nice to see this happening. Uh, Ernesto Carrillo with EP Carrillo. And you see his daughter and son uh, out front. Um, Aladino, um, that his daughter's uh, right out front um, yep. at the trade show. And um, I, I've heard interviews with them. Um, they're doing a great job. Um, this is it. The torches, because you got to envision that the cigar boom happened in, in 1990, right? So um, here it is 30 something years later. And, um, you know, us. 30 year olds at the time are in the 60, 60s <laughs> today. So um, I don't think we leave. I don't think uh, you're going to see a Nesto go or who still go or anything like that, but they're lining up the next uh, one to do it. Uh, if, if I was to guess, I don't know if you know that um, Eric Newman's dad, um, he lived into his late nineties and uh, he died at the desk that he had meetings that day and then they had lunch and then he went back into his office and then they went to go bring something to him later in the day. And there he was at the desk and he had died there. Wow. Uh, no calling anybody for an emergency. He put his head down and, uh, you know, that was it. And, um, you know, I, I smile when I say that and I, and I, and I knew, uh, stamp and, um, but he did exactly the way he wanted to do it. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's going to be a lot of people in this industry. You're going to have to wheel them out. They're going <laughs> to, which is nice because. It's oh, a- for sure. 
it, it's a nice industry. They don't want to go, but you better get it going uh, for the next generation to be able to handle it. And we see on uh, Eric Newman's, you see Drew Newman now, uh, you know, when I see pitches and stuff and you're at the trade show, boom, you, you, they put Drew in front and then yep. uh, Bobby and Eric are off to the side. And I'm like, okay, perfect for the show because Eric had the torch passed to him. And now it seems, and he can tell me if it's wrong, he's patching the torch now is what I see visually. Uh, he's doing it too. So this is a guy that did it on both ends. So I think he's the perfect one to have that conversation with. Yeah, no, that's, that's a really valid point. And uh, I, you know, I don't know that I, something is rattling around in my head and I don't know if it's accurate or not. And it's something maybe you can ask, but I think Drew's office at El Rey Low is um, his grandfather's office. Oh, really? I think well, he I got it. I know his... where that was. I know where it was. So I'll I... uh, have to yeah. see Yeah. I'm not entirely sure, but because I'm pulling this out from when I took the tour back in 2020, you know, right before they started doing the public tours, you know, we went down there and able to kind of get in first. And uh, I feel like that was that was something that I heard. But again, I don't swear by it. Well, I'll tell you, Eric's Eric's office is Eric's office. It was before. So he didn't move into his, his dad's office from what I understand. Uh, so yeah, so Bobby's office is Bobby's office where I know where that is too. So uh so maybe Drew, that's maybe there. there you go. So so um again, I wanted to bring you on to talk about I want to talk about your well, let, you've already mentioned your editorial. Let's talk a little bit about your editorial. So I think that you're hitting um a very important point um for manufacturers to hear and and sometimes you know and that's where that's where the power of the media comes into play speaking truth to power you know and that kind of thing um it's one of those things where they need to hear that um and they know it that the economy is slowing budgets are tightening you know um everybody's not able to go out and buy these 20 dollars cigars and i understand that projects take time to build up and everything and and get them going and, and unveil them. But uh, last year's PCA, you're right. It was a whole lot of expensive cigars. And then the McAuliffe Black comes in at like seven, eight bucks. And then this year, you're right. It seems like everybody kind of went to that cheaper price point, not or less expensive, I should say, yeah. price point. Cheaper is a bad word. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things where I think everybody's acknowledging it. But... Um, you know, they're not saying I, I, it out loud, though. They're not yeah. saying it out loud, but their actions speak louder than words. And uh, it, it's funny that I put that out there yesterday, and here I am talking to a real writer, uh, which I'm not. Uh, I thought it was very well written. Well, so um, Dan Davison, who's do, working for two guys also, and I do the Astros with, uh, yeah. he's good. So I write this stuff, and then he stands over my shoulder after it was written and says, what are you trying to say here and think, and this word is right here, and this, what do we have here? Oh, we got somebody coming in. Oh. This is Oliver Nouveau, special uh, show. Oliver. Oh, special delivery. Here we go. What's, what's going on, buddy? Just want to make sure Dave had a nice little ashtray. He, oh. just, he just landed our red anchor. The new ashtray arrived. Red anchor ashtray. Ah, that's a Nothing gorgeous better. ashtray. All right, look look what I'm smoking. I got the Legion oh, 30th those, anniversary. Those landed in the Red Anchor ashtray. Can you do that? Or just Red Anchor's allowed? Yeah, it's right. all united. That's the yeah. thing. It's united. All it right. doesn't matter. So here we go. <laughs> and all of the boats showing up, setting sail. All right, this was a two-year project. This was about a two-year project. Two yeah. years. He starts yeah. dealing with stuff like this, and he says, I want the uh, the anchor to come out of the ashtray but be able to be seen on the other side as opposed to just there and then dealing with oh the, craziness. Yeah, the first mold that was made it said that they could do it and then it went to production it was too difficult so had to find another manufacturer and so it was a challenge all right so they were so, available now enjoy yeah la giana 30th will, will be available start to ship again because we got the first shipment in uh that went came and went and now the second shipment's coming in shortly so all right, that's a hate good thing throw, coming. Hate to throw the ash inside the ashtray, but that's what it's for, right? Oh, it's there you go. It's clean. That can be wiped out. All right. All right. Just want to say hi, Nick. Good All seeing right. you, buddy. Oh, 
little surprise guest appearance. See what happens. You never, you, it's you never know who's going to pop into Dave's no, office. No, my door is always <laughs> open here, uh, and, and anybody could show up at any time. There you go. See? That is a gorgeous ashtray. I didn't, I didn't manage to get one of those at TPE, but I, I, I did manage to, uh, to, to sweet talk, uh, uh, Oliver into one of those, uh, the Smoking Man. Uh, oh, right, good, I, I good. finally got myself a smoke. That was my prize thing. I came back from Vegas with was the smoke, smoke alone. You stick the cigar in the ashtray. And yeah. So this is the day one of uh, all of the revolt taking over United Cigar. What is that now? Seven years ago? Seven years ago? I think so. And he comes in with this broken ashtray from the turn of the century, 1900s. And, um, he says, look at this ashtray. And then he puts a little cigar in it because the hole was small. Yeah. Showed me. And then the smoke comes out. And he says, I always wanted to recreate this thing for today's modern age that a big cigar could fit in it, whatever. I said, you came to the right guy. I love shit like that. <laughs> now it's sent out for a mold to be made and all this stuff. And it took years. And uh, we ended up doing it. And then, uh, well, sold through them. And then... Uh, we made a second version of it where it says United Cigar on the base of it. And another version came out with that. And we've done that a couple of times since. And people want it. They, and so do I. Is, yeah. it, is it practical? Really, no. It's not practical as an ashtray because you have to empty it out. So in the, in the, in the second version, of the third version that came out, we put a big thing in the back and we call it an ash hole. It's a hole <laughs> where you can empty the ashes out of, of the back of it. And uh, then the next thing was, okay, let's come up with, uh, not let's come up with, he comes up with um, a red anchor ashtray, uh, which, which seems like it's not a big deal, but it was a big deal because of how, what he did over here. Yeah. Well, it's a gorgeous looking ashtray, but what I like is, and you did it, Oliver did it when he brought it in. It's got that, the top of the, of the anchor it's just a perfect little handle to pick oh, it up yeah. and move it around yeah. with. It, you it's know, it's good. It's strong. Uh, it, it's a well-made, nice ashtray that they say I think seventy-five dollar retail or something. Oh, okay. They have them for events with the uh, beautiful packaging, the boxes, everything. But he, he gets into these projects, and as I as I tell him, I'm getting older. You can't do these two and three year projects because uh, <laughs> it's a long ways away. But it, takes that long to end up pulling something off like this. Ah, uh, what are you it's talking about? Not just about? he does ashtrays. You know who the number one ashtray manufacturer in the world is? No. Nelson Alfonso. Really? And you see his beautiful ashtrays that he makes, but he's been making ashtrays for Habanos, Cuba. Okay. Uh, I think 25 years. And if you get his ashtrays and you go to the bottom of any Cuban cigar ashtray, at the bottom, it used to say Byron on the ashtray. The old version before there was a Byron cigar brand was out there because that yeah. was the family's trademark uh, before uh, Castro and all that. There was a cigar brand called Byron. came out in 1850. His great-great-great-grandfather's brand and then went on from there. And when the brand came out of Byron, Cuba says, yeah, you can't put Byron on it because it's a cigar brand that you own in the United States. So now it says uh, Nelson Alfonso on the bottom okay. of them. But there's thousands and thousands of different ashtrays over the years that nobody else uh, can, can claim. I mean, the design work of ashtrays. He says, I think I'm number one in the world for designing ashtrays. And um, when he sees something when, at, at the trade show, he looks at a, at a jar or an ashtray or packaging and he goes by and say, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine of, of the stuff that's there. It's all ripped off of his stuff. And I go, well, do something about it. Let's I was just, that's gotta do be something at that point. And he said, I can't. He said, because I worked to make that for Habanos, which is Cuba. Oh. And he said that would be them that would have to sue them. And they have no rights in the United States. So yeah, people are actually get away with ripping his design work off, but lots and lots of stuff you see that's out there that people say, wow, that looks really nice. And this unique packaging, uh, it's all him. Well, you know, at some point or another, 
somewhere long down the road, possibly you and I will never see it. Lord knows. But if, if relations with Cuba changes and everything starts to smooth out and, and they become, you know, a, a country that, that the United States actually has a relationship with and everything, and much like the other countries in the world, you have to wonder, you know, what's going to end up going on with all that. Cause man, there's going to be just a lot of sticky crap that oh, people yeah. are going to have to figure out. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a problem, and there's, there's already legality stuff with Cohiba that's been going on for years. Yeah, Caprian didn't come out in the U.S. until the '90s, and it wasn't created from somebody else's brand. That was Fidel Castro, mm-hmm. as Trinidad was in Bahike, which was um, another Nelson Alfonso creation. Yeah, that came out, but uh, the Cuban cigars are the issue, I believe, of the whole thing of my editorial with the price gouging that's been going on. For sure. Years. And it seemed, you know, Cuba was putting out um, about 125 million cigars a year. And last year they did less than 40 million. And guess what? They made just as much money. Well, so, yeah, because all they did was just up the price. You know? That's it. Yeah. Right? So, so why sell 120 million when you can sell 40 for three times the money and it comes up to the same? Uh, it was their thought process. But um, what happened is, and I think it backfires on them, is the retailer having far less cigars, especially in Europe, uh, was forced at that point to take New World cigars, which is cigars from anywhere else other than Cuba, and bring them in the, in the shops. And they saw that um, instead of selling a hundred dollar Cohiba, that they were taking on these other brands and let's say Perdomo for instance, and a $10 Perdomo. Is the hundred dollar Cohiba 10 times better than the $10 P- Perdomo? No. Not only is it not 10 times, <laughs> it's not better. Mm-hmm. The person soon learned. And this has been going on too long. And I think that if they up production of Cuban cigars now at this point, they've burnt down the other end, that people aren't even going to buy them. So at the same time, here in the U.S., they're saying, wow, I'm getting $10 for my cigar, and Cohiba's going for $100, and my cigar is just as good or better than theirs. Why can't I get $100 for the cigar? And you'd see brands that are decent priced cigars in the United States. Rocky Patel, for instance, he hate to bring up the names, but I got to call him out as, as I see him. Came out with a hundred dollar cigar. I'm like, well, there's no reason for the hundred dollar cigar. Yeah. Unless you tell me a story and you say, oh, it's 10 year post age rolling and the things that. Uh, Atabay and things like that have a, have a reason to or whatever. Or, yeah. Go oh, give me something. Give me something. And the answer is this is a hundred dollars because Cohiba gets a hundred dollars. So we're going to come out with a hundred dollar one. Sock work. His um, what do they call it? Um, it was the unicorn. Unicorns. Yeah. Right? Uh, Davidoff ends up taking the Royal cigar and going to one hundred and fifty because Cohiba went up to one hundred. That that cigar was thirty dollars, fifty dollars. $150. Why yeah. all of a sudden I'm watching this gouging going on. Uh, Padron and Fuente get together. They put out a $200 cigar. In the- Which blows my mind. It just blows my mind. Because, I, you know, I just can't imagine taking... It's like taking $200 bills and lighting them on fire. You know? I mean... And you need both. You need to try to... And that's and you're right. That's exactly it. It's not just two hundred. It's four hundred because but why? Why was that done? Because they can. Is is that the excuse to it? Only ta- put out a three hundred dollar cigar last year. Yeah. And we're talking about <laughs> these were brands that used to be the value cigar brands of there, and then yet we see the right thing happening that Perdomo comes out with a thirtieth anniversary. And could they have gotten thirty dollars for the cigar? Probably, but they came out. Oh, with- yeah. La Giana that I'm smoking. Could we possibly have got thirty dollars? I suppose, but we came out at twelve. Um, could have at least gotten twenty. Right. You know, right. I mean, keeping but, it in line with kind of the pricing okay. of the, the the line, but but even twenty. 
Yeah. But the, the idea of the line was it's the everyday cigar for the everyday person. And that's who we're, who we're marketed to. And that's who Nick, Nick Perdomo always did his brand to. So he stays true to its brand instead of saying, okay, let me do this because I can. He, certainly per, Perdomo could have done it. Um, LFD, La Fleur Dominicana, well, they came out with their $100 gold edition um, NFT, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Absurd pricing that happens with that. So they come out with their 30th anniversary and they come out at $30 because, hey, we can, I guess. And here's the thing, and, and just to like, you know, give a little context. So like that NFT cigar, that kind of, I put that in the same ballpark as uh, what I wish the Padron Fuente collaboration would have been. And what I mean by that is it was a limited thing. You had to buy in on it, you know, and and it was for for those limited people. You knew going into it, I guess, as a consumer, I knew going into it, that's going to be a limited thing. It's not for me. I It's out of sight, out of mind. You know, I don't even care. Yeah. Great for them that they made millions of dollars on it. Um, and and that, uh, you know, the cigar, the people that got the cigars wanted it fine. I feel like with the Padron, Padron Fuente thing, it's been kind of marketed as, hey, we're doing this. You guys need to go out and get it and blah, blah, blah and all that. Then they drop the price and we're all like, well, shit, my budget can't afford that. What am I going to do? And I almost feel like if they just would have made instead of making, I don't even how many boxes that, that they yeah, end up doing. It, it's a limited run, whatever. Yeah. If they just would have done five boxes, auctioned them off for charity, right. maybe made a like a piece, whatever crazy thing. Bingo. And yeah. at that point, I would have sat back and been like, that's pretty cool. It's never going to be anything I'm ever going to be able to smoke. But it's just enough of a tease now that they've put it out in this limited capacity at this high price to where, you know, however many retailers across the country are going to get maybe one box to possibly split. And at that point, it's just enough of a tease that I feel like it, they're taking advantage of the consumer and not actually going for what they could have gone for. 30 years My ago, opinion. 30 years ago, a brand came out called Part of This 150 celebrating the 150th anniversary of part of this. These cigars came in at the astonishing price. And there was a reason for it too, which was 50 year old tobacco at the time. They had these builds of tobacco. So there was a long story that went with it. There was a, a lots of education that came in advance of the cigar that came in that all the retailers ended up hearing. They had a big gala event. Uh, it was unbelievable, um, the showcase of this thing. And here they came in and they broke the $10 barrier. And we're talking 30 years ago, which was crazy to begin with that they ended up doing this. And it worked. And what happened after that is a whole bunch of brands came in and said, we're going to do that too. So during the cigar boom, there was this craziness of cigars that came in over $10 at that time. And we're talking about rounding close to $20. I don't think anything ever hit $20 but close to that, and we're, we're talking 30 years ago. And um, this is where we are right now, or where we were last year. And people did not buy the other, the other cigars because there was no reason for it. Part of this 150, there was a reason for it. The other ones, there was no reason for it. And they sat there and they didn't sell and they went away. And these manufacturers ended up coming out with other brands, other lines of their cigar. Um, priced where it should have been in the first place. That's what I saw that happened at the trade show this year. To my happiness, to be honest with you, that I ended up seeing it because I said, this craziness, maybe it's just me, but I couldn't sell the, the brands. And we got mm -hmm. good stores, we got an online presence, and I wasn't able to move these cigars. I took some in, not a lot, but I took some in, and I go, well, for some reason, people aren't buying those cigars from me. I'm trying everything I can try, but they're not buying it. Turns out, and nobody's admitting it, but turns out they weren't buying them from anybody. Yeah. Because all of a sudden becomes um, the, the brands at better prices. So you take E.P. Carrillo. Uh, these are all friends of mine, but E.P. Carrillo just came out with cigars uh, in the 8 to $10 range. 
and they won Cigar Aficionado's Cigar of the Year three three different years of recent days. They got the highest rating of any cigar of Cigar Aficionado ever, and yet I had the brands in here, and they were hard to sell. And they yeah. were beautiful, and they smoked great and everything, but it was hard to sell. And I go, what's wrong with me? Why can't I end up selling them? All of a sudden, at the trade show, here's all these lines at 8 to $10. And I go, maybe they just weren't selling. That's what it says to me, because if these $17 cigars were selling, wouldn't you think they would have more $17 cigars? Uh -huh. They had more 8 to $10 cigars. Uh, and the same went for a Bronx Tail, which is that Chaz Commentary cigar. We didn't take it on. It was $25. I'm like, this is crazy. Uh, $25 because it, it's the name of a movie and there's an actor who's a cigarette smoker to begin with. Uh, <laughs> part of it, and not a cigar smoker. Um, I'm not even taking it on. Well, this year, here's the second version of it, and it was $12. Uh -huh. Oh, we took it. Let me try it. Okay. Oh, last year, there wasn't even a sample of it. This year, there were samples, and they were less than half the price. And I said, okay, it's decent. We'll try some and take them on. Uh, Asylum, who tried some high-end Asylums, which was always a budget brand. Next thing you know, they came out with cigars at $8 at the trade show. And there was many things like this. I said, they didn't talk to each other. Nobody knew what was going to show up at the show. But it was one after the other, after the other, after the other. And I said, okay, we all learned. The only people that didn't learn is the people that didn't come out with $20 cigars yet. And they were at the show showing me $20 cigars. True. And I'm like, oh, my God, what a shame. And smoking a sample of it and say, pretty good for if it was $7. If it was $8, if it was $10, maybe. But it's not 20. It's not 22, unless it has a story to it. So let's take Aladino, for instance. Aladino came out with good price cigars all the time. And this year, the most expensive cigar, $22. Uh -huh. like, oh, no, not Aladino. These guys are too smart. But there's a reason for this cigar. They came out with the first ever all Cameroon cigar. Wrap a filler bind the Cameroon. It's never been done before. I was concerned it's not going to burn properly. Yeah. Uh, how is it going to end up burning? How is it going to taste? It's, you know, it, it's almost like when Opus X came out, that was all Dominican cigars, the first one. Dominican wrapper did not burn. But Carlito Fuente did it and made it so it worked. And it was something. And when that cigar came in at over $10 a cigar when it was released, it was holy shit. You know what? There's a reason for it. And there was a reason for the Aladino All Cameroon because how much work went into research and development to end up making this product end up happening. So it's there. We'll see how it does. But um, this is what I call in the article the McAuliffe effect. McAuliffe had expensive cigars out there too. They put out the seven, eight dollar cigar, it blows up, it becomes the most popular thing by far that they ever yep. put out. And then everybody's eyes look to that and said, Wow, our twenty dollar cigar didn't work. Let's try this. And now I hope that the consumer gets behind all these brands I'm talking about that come in at that price. Early indications say, yes, they are, because we've taken some of this in. McAuliffe Blue has already shown up. And holy God, it, it, it came out <laughs> of like crazy because of the success of Black. And they have a red one coming out. And Perdomo 30th at $12 is flying off the shelf. We're talking about the cigar you're smoking, West Tampa, at $10 yep. a cigar. It flies. But a retailer that's been around for almost 40 years now has a real hard time trying to sell $20 cigars. No, I don't have a problem selling an Atabate at $20. There's a reason for it. I don't have a problem with a Padron or an Opus X or even a Davidoff. But the new Davidoff showed up today. Davidoff Maduro. Third time Davidoff Maduro came out. Failed the last two. Okay. It's different because they came out with Davidoff Maduro, but it's $50 for the Robusto. Oh, my God. So I'm like, what are you doing? It didn't work at 20. So now it comes out at 50. But you know what? They can sell less than half of what they sold, and it becomes successful. I don't know. But listen, I'm calling it out in this article. Uh, I know everybody thinks it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it out anyway. What? 
Uh, we have another special guest. Another special guest. Another special guest. Look at this. Oh my gosh. This is this is Agnes. Hi, Agnes. Bringing coffee, not just coffee. <laughs> what do we call this? Special coffee. Special coffee. Special coffee. Look at this thing. Do you see it? I do. Like, it's all layered and looking and wonderful. And it's in a glass. It doesn't even burn my hand. It stays nice and hot. Good. So, Agnes, what's happening? You know, smoking humbly by the 1850s, like, you know. Living. Oh, nice. Nice. I have good tasting cigars and coffee. So. There we go. Sounds like a wonderful morning. It is. So far, so good, right? We're moving so along. So far. Do you have one of I, these? I don't have one. I don't have an Agnes. <laughs> I do not have an Agnes. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Agnes. Nice to meet you, Agnes. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> uh, my my luck on the dating apps has not been good enough to find an Agnes. <laughs> I have a wife. That's not a date. I know. I'm not. I'm not implying <laughs> anything. I, I'm making my joke. I'm not implying anything. Um, no. I. I but <laughs> back to your point. Um. I, you know, the simple fact is cigar, you know, cigars are one of those um, luxury items that, you know, look, I'm not going to be able to smoke or I'm not going to be able to drink some, you know, 200 uh, year old wine that some king over in Saudi Arabia is going to be able to drink. I'm not going to be able to drive some Bentley that, uh, you know, um, a, a music star or a mu uh, movie star is going to be able to drive. I'm not going to live in some palatial estate in the Caribbean and have, you know, an army of servants working for me and everything. But but I can smoke the same cigar that any one of those guys can smoke, because typically, you know, aside from, I guess, the high end Cohibas now that you're talking about. You know, you're not going to be able cigars are generally it's that it's that reasonably priced luxury item that we all can we all can smoke generally the same thing. And Let's yeah, keep it that way. We have to keep it that way because it started going off the rails for a couple of years and really aggravating me. I love this industry. I don't want it to go away. And when you start doing that and people were following suit, I go, they're going to ruin the cigar industry. And, and I don't know if it's gluttony or whatever it is. Again, if there's a reason for it, fine. There's, you know, and they, there's the special thing of aged tobacco and this was belonged to the king or even the liquor. And there's a yeah. reason. Look, when there's no reason for it, El Septimo. I mean, <laughs> you got to tell me what the reason is for the $80 cigar. I'm not buying into it, um, nor am I buying into... Three hundred dollar Cohibas. I'm not buying into it. A cube. I've smoked them. I've smoked them when they used to be twenty dollars. They're the same thing. They make less of them now than they do. It wasn't worth twenty, to be honest with you. For sure. And, uh, th this is the stuff that ends up happening. It's not good for our industry. Uh, it's certainly not good for bringing new people into the industry. It gets a uh, oh, special guest. Another special guest. Special it, guest. It's it's time my door is always open. Your door is uh, always open. Break. Oh, it's time for the potato chip break. Oh, coffee and potato. Uh, hey, wait a minute. You were just there. Is it the Cigar Pulpit podcast? It is. I know, I right? It's one of my favorites. <laughs> oh, my God. Four, right? so, so, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Third it's fourth minute. after none. Okay. You well oh, now wait a minute. Now you 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 get on to him about lectins and all of the things that he eats. And These yet you're kettle corn and, ones, so and yet, lectins in the kettle corn one. They're right. they took long ones. No, no, no. They're, they're right. yeah, it's terrible. But yet you're bringing him the snack. Here's yeah. the thing. He signs the uh the, the paycheck on the front. I only sign it on the back. So whatever he tells me to do, that's my job for the day. I just feel like you're being an enabler. Well, again. If he says I gotta bring him chips at this time, I gotta bring him chips. He got a name, huh? What kind of talk is that? I'm just saying, you know. He's enabling he's enabling you, Dave. Yeah. People? What do you do? Enabling? Enabling? I don't think that's a word. Enabling. But you're enabling. You you're enabling him with his snacks. If that's if you're never mind. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um 
I lost my train. I'm over. This I'm over. It. It. Anyway, well, you got to be able to multitask. This goes on. Coffee comes in at certain potato chips at the time. New things as as they arrive. Day to day operations have to continue as we're doing this. Who, well, we who, done it at night when I'm not going to get interrupted. But anyway. no, I think that I think this is great. We're all getting okay. a nice little window into your day here. You know, you're you've got your potato chip break and everything. That's fantastic. What time um, is potato chip break usually? My potato, I, I take it you know, randomly, whatever. As you're driving, wherever you are, because you're going to do Oh, yeah. I heard you do a lot of miles on the car. I heard on the show. Oh, the yeah, I do a lot of miles on the car. I uh, I actually just rolled 184,000 not too long ago, and that's a 2019. So, wow. yeah. Uh, I, I said that on the show. I'm like, holy shit, the miles you put on. I put on $15,000 worth of mileage reimbursement. You know, uh, when I met with my tax person, that's good. That <laughs> helps. You write the you. scars off now too. Bingo, that helped too. Awesome. Uh, it, it all didn't help enough. I still have my tax bill to Uncle Sam, but you know, we'll we'll, we'll worry about that later. Yeah, I, I write um, up special coffee and the potato chips and the cigars. There you go. And, and I still pay a ridiculous amount anyway, but that's part of it, I guess. Congratulations, right? Is there, that, yeah, I was gonna say you're doing taxes. well. Pay us money, so. Yeah. Um, uh, but I well, still say keep the price of the product down so everybody can enjoy it. Uh, you know, I don't want to have to cut down on my potato chip consumption because the price of, of uh, guys have gone up. Bingo. And so the thing the, is, you know, the price has gone up, the cost of the product, of the, the shipping, the cost of the bands and everything have gone up. But let's say on a crazy level, it went up 20% from last year. You don't take a, a $10 cigar and go to $50 cigar no. and say this 20%. It's 20% of the cost of the goods, which is if it's $3, it went up 60 cents. Exactly. It's trickle all down. So let, let's be honest with each other and not ruin the golden goose right now. And that's all I'm asking. And the thing is, there can be a price range. You can have, you know, the, the 5 to $30 cigar. And the thing is, $30? No, I'm not going to smoke that on the regular. But maybe I had a really good day. Maybe something really nice happened. You know, celebrating the birth of a child, you know, celebrating um, <laughs> cel I had a $30 cigar to celebrate my divorce. You know, it's that kind of thing. It's like one of those things that you just do this stuff and and those are your your celebratory cigars, you know? And and that there's a market for that and there's a, a purpose for that. But how about, but, how about staying in your lane of if you are a value cigar brand or whatever, can you imagine a, a hundred thousand dollar Volkswagen? It doesn't make any sense, right? No, it doesn't. Exactly. So these people getting their regular line and saying, "Come out with something different altogether," but they're going to feed off of the brand name that already exists and say, "Okay, I'm going to get my three hundred dollar version of of um, Oliva." Um, yeah. I don't know if anybody ever smoked it. We, I didn't buy it, but it didn't make any sense to me. And, uh, you know, call it something different if that's what you're going to do. But it, it's absurd to do that. It, it's, uh, it, 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 to me, it's like a slap in the face of your consumer that's on it. Well, it, it is. And the thing, and, and, but also, uh, it's rattling around in my head, you know, uh, something unique, something different. The Agonorsa Leaf, they came out with that 10 by 100. Yeah. You know? I don't know. What's the price point on that? Yeah, um, I'm going to guess. Sorry, I'm putting you on the spot. I don't know. Is that a $40 cigar maybe or something? So it's, so it's, it's, it's. The amount of maybe tobacco, a, though. But that's the season. thing. Yeah. It's a, it's a unique, different experience. And so it's one of those things where maybe a cigar smoker comes in, sees that and says, ooh, 40 bucks. That's, that's a little high on the, the price point scale for me. But I'm only going to smoke this one time. And it's kind of a novelty. So I'll go ahead and do it, you know, and that kind of and you'll thing. get eight hours out of it anyway. Right. And it's an agonorsa leaf. So, you know, yeah. it's going to taste good at least. Yeah. So why not? You know, um, so I'm OK with little fun projects like that. But to your point, yeah, you know, going going ridiculously high for something that that should have just been a 15 to 20 dollar at most, you know, yeah. probably is just that. But anyway, so. Events. Let's talk about events. All right. All right. So you are the king of events. And the thing I see so often 
at cigar shops all the time. It's always that typical buy three, get one free, you know, maybe the manufacturer's there and you get to take a picture and that's about it. You know, it's a little grip and grin and buy three, get one free. And everybody sits in the back and smokes their cigars and then they go home. And I've been to those. And the thing is, they're not quite they're 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 OK, but they're not the thing that I sit back and remember when I when I think about events that I've been to that I remember there's there's a unique experience associated with it. And um, I, f- I wanted to kind of take a moment for for us to discuss just some examples, just kind of what what retailers should be maybe thinking about when they're considering an event other than just to buy three, get one free. It's to me, it's tragic when they when somebody that when a retailer does it, buy three, get one free. You've lost 25 percent of your sales that day. Number one, um, you created a mooch market for both your store and for the brand itself that you lowered the value of the product. That's why you see the ashtrays that yes, you'll get one of these ashtrays with, a, I would imagine, a box of red egg or whatever they're going to end up doing. Uh, it's a luxury brand to begin with. It's a luxury ashtray. It's packaged beautifully. And here's what you're going to get with it. And it, it will sit there and advertise for the brand forever after that. Maybe you're a nautical guy and you like that type of thing. And it's nice for it. But to diminish the brand itself with that kind of event, uh, it's really a sale, right? It's by yeah. free, free is a sale. Um, and with a sale, do you need the owner of the company being there while you're, while you're diminishing the value of his cigar? It, it happens. Uh, I, I always thought that it was ludicrous completely uh, to do it, but let's take that same event and instead of giving you, we'll call them $10 cigars, buy three $10 cigars, you get a $10 cigar for free. Um, instead of that $10 cigar, let's give away a chance to win hundred million dollars by three get a chance to win a hundred million dollars well i don't i can't have somebody win a hundred million dollars you're gonna buy the powerball tickets that day yep put them in a bowl and they're gonna buy three and they're gonna get a chance to win a hundred million dollars the signage says outside come in buy three get a chance to win a hundred million dollars well that's interesting let me see what that's all about you go in you have a couple of laughs to it you buy three you get the chance to win a hundred million dollars the conversation begins what happens if you win $100 million? Oh, my God, I'm going to buy this and I'm going to do that. Here's a conversation starter. And it's all based around this $100 million thing. It costs you $2 for the Powerball ticket. You didn't diminish the value of the cigar. You actually put it up as, oh, I'm going to buy the company of the air and the guy's going to sell it to you. The company. Yeah. Whatever's going to end up happening. There's so much you can do. We did uh, uh, an event a long time ago of buy a box, get a box free. So it was outside, it's outside. Buy any box of cigars, get a box free. Any box of cigars, get a box free. Well, I'm not that guy to give away free cigars and diminish the cigar brand at all. So you got, you bought a box of cigars, you brought a box of Lucky Charm cereal. <laughs> we went it's 1, a box. 1,000 boxes of Lucky Charms between our three stores. They were everywhere. They were piled up. It was mountains of boxes of cereal. And the people came in and go, what the hell is going on here? Buy a box of cigars, anyone you want, you win, you get a box of Lucky Charm cereal for free. So they'd say, well, I'm getting my box of cigars anyway. I could give a shit about the Lucky Charm cereal, but <laughs> let me get the box of Lucky Charm cereal. I haven't had that since I was a kid, whatever. Talk has happened, ensued at that point. I'm sure whatever. General Mills really liked that promotion. Yeah. <laughs> and... Um, they get their box of Lucky Charm cereal and said, okay, we have a box of Lucky Charm cereal right at the register. It says store box. It's just for the store. It's labeled there. <coughs> now you get a chance to win a box of cigars that you just bought. If you can guess how many green clovers are in this <laughs> box of Lucky Charms. And we're gonna do it at the end of the week. We're going to run this co- this contest all week long. At the end of the week, who's ever closest without going over uh, is going to win the box um, of the cigar that they bought. So give me a receipt. 
How many do you think it's in there? And the guy says 142. Okay, 142. And here's your name on it. And we're going to have the answer. And we'll put the answer up in the store. So next week, if you come by, you see if you won, you think we'll be hanging in there. All three stores, somebody's going to win. Only one person between the three stores is going to win a box of the cigars they purchased. Here's your box of Lucky Charms. This was an interesting experiment that happened on. And I love to see what people end up doing. So two days later, the guy that came in to buy a box of, he happened to buy a box of Padron 2000s, the regular version of Padron. Okay. Two days later, he comes back in the store. And I recognized that he was here before. I know the guy. And he goes back into the humidor. And he comes back this time with a box of Padron Anniversarios. Okay. More than twice the price. Yeah. And I said, oh, you get a box of Lucky Charms with it. He says, yeah, I know. And he gets a box of Lucky Charms. Would, now, I'd like you to tell me how many green clovers are in here. He said, 14. He said 140 <laughs> last time. He said 14. So what happened? Tell he me. went home, opened up the box that he got <laughs> with the 2000s, and he counted. A hundred other people did the same thing. <laughs> what a slam dunk week that was. I well, mean, yeah, because you just sold two boxes to one guy in a week. Everybody. Yeah. They all did the same thing. And they all came back. So I got all these big numbers and then all these small numbers. And at the end, one person won the box of cigars that they bought with the closest number. By the way, it's done by weight. It's not done by this 14 green clovers going. in. It's just dumped in by weight of the mix of what yeah. it is. So whatever it came out to. Somebody ended up winning, but it was fun before, during, and after. This whole event was unbelievable. A box of Lucky Charms at the time cost me $3 a piece. I sold a 1,000 boxes of cigars <laughs> in a week, and I gave away one box. See? That's, so that's creative. Buy, it was way better than buy three, get one free. For sure. And so later on, a couple of years go by, we do it with um, the um, Count Chocula um, thing at Halloween because they came out with the retro packaging from yeah. the old days. Only Target did it. So I go to Target and I buy a thousand boxes of Count Chocula, <laughs> blueberry, and you know, there was, there was actually four of them. It was Frankenberry. Frankenberry, blueberry, Count Chocula. And then there was Yummy Mummy. Which I don't yes. ever remember. You remember that? I, I, don't I, remember. I, I don't remember it. I remember when they came out with it recently with okay. the retro pack, but I don't remember it from way back when. No, well, me either. Me either. No. So I thought they snuck that one in or whatever, but we ended up buying all those boxes and the people come in. A couple of years have passed. A lot of people with new customers never seen such a thing before. Other people said, Oh, I remember this from whatever, but here it was yeah. on again. And, you know, it, it's rinse and repeat once you get a good thing. But rinse and repeat bad ideas, lose 25% of your sales, yeah. you get one free, and call it an event where it's not an event at all. And yeah. expect people to all of a sudden say, that was a great event. Not one person is ever going to say, I went to an event once, buy free, get one free. What an unbelievable event that was. It was genius. And everybody was so excited. <laughs> no, it doesn't happen at all. No. You know, so no. put a little energy into it or just buy David versus Goliath, how to compete and beat the online giant. We always complain that the online giant, whatever business you're in, is how do you compete with that? You do things that they can't do, which is buy all the cereal and put this thing out. You walk into a... It, Two guys smoke shop looked like a, a cereal store. It was the most <laughs> insane thing when you walked in each time that we have done such a thing. But there's 100 proven promotions for brick and mortar stores because you can't think of them, right? And what's going to happen or should happen, I hope, is you're reading one of them and you tweak it. You say, you know what? It would be better if I did this. Or it makes you think that I have said inside the, in, in the book, that it was for um, Lucky Charms. And then you say, well, Halloween's coming. Oh, my God. And, and that was me. I, I knew it from the from the um, Lucky Charms. 
But when I read the story that the, the old versions of Count Chocula and those were out, I go, oh, that would kind of work. Maybe that would be cool at Halloween time. They and people came in and said, oh, my God, I haven't had that in 20 years. You know, Count Chocula. Exactly. Whatever. And at the end of it, whatever was left of boxes of cigars, we gave to the food pantry, the local food pantry that, that's around us. So they got, if they got 80 boxes of cereal, they were so grateful because they usually get canned goods and stuff and they got kids and they'd be able to have, kid would have a box of cereal. Again, it becomes a feel good thing. It, it's, a, it's a good thing for the customer that comes in. Just get creative and come up with something other than the same old rinse and repeat things that don't work. If, if there's something out there that works great, oh, do that over and over again, but because it's so great, but not the stuff that is so boring and so brainless. And let's do that again and say, you know, business is still slow here. Uh, I keep doing the same thing and it, it just keeps being terrible. Yeah. Yeah. That's insanity. Because you're doing the same thing. Yeah. Oh. No, I just, and that's the thing I love about this is that you just you come up with some of the most creative and off the wall kind of ideas. But when you stop and actually think about it for a moment, it's like, you know, that actually works really, really well. And and but see, it's not just the the one off little ideas that you have. You also have the your your kind of annual slate of different events like, you know, I love. I love the the idea of, and I think we've talked about it on the show before, the Father's Day event that you do. Yeah, you know, I wish like, everybody would do that. It is it is the one I look forward to every year, and the people that come look forward to it every year. We sell a lot of tickets to the same people over and over, along with new people that end up jumping in. Um, it's not heavy lifting at all, but you, you bring a manufacturer, and if, and if you don't have that kind of relationship with the manufacturer, maybe it's your local rep. And yeah. he brings his son or father there. And you do the event around there. And it's not a lot of talking or anything. But the people, it's so interesting of saying hello to the guests as they come in. And here's my customer. And he goes, this is my son. And he introduced me to his son. And you can see the face. It's almost the same. Or here's my father. Or here's my daughter. Uh, or sometimes the, the surrogate um, member of your customer who brings one of the guys from the cigar lounge is like a father to him um, or anything like that. It's a good time. It's, it's something different. And uh, it's a rinse and repeat thing. Every year, Father's Day is coming up. We do it the, the night before. And so that the father and sons and stuff can be, I don't want to take it away from them on that day on purpose. Uh, and, and it's fantastic. Um, yeah. And I when I first came up with the idea, we ran it that first year. It was great. I told everybody I knew to do it. And I'm looking across the country and saying, is there anybody copying this? I'm begging you to copy. I'm begging you to copy my ideas that work at Two Guys Smoke Shop, other cigar retailers. Why? Because it's good for the industry. Yeah. And buy three, get one is not good for the industry. It's not good for you. It's not good for the consumer. It's not good for the brand. It's not good for anything. And why is that get get done over and over again because it's that simple uh when something like father and son cigar dinner does not happen everywhere why is that not being i'm telling you it works it's fantastic and it's good for the brand they're all happy and uh i, I think this is our 14th year coming up that's fantastic yeah that's awesome and you know and i don't know maybe it's a situation where because you guys have now do you hold that at your shop there we, we did in COVID because we never wanted to miss it. And that, that year we, we yeah. couldn't do it, but we typically try to do it at a restaurant. Sometimes it's outdoor at a restaurant place. Uh, last year we had an outdoor at a restaurant that started pouring rain out and we had mm. some tents that wasn't going to work. So everybody had to put their cigar down. We went into the restaurant, we had dinner, then we came back out, back under the tents that was still raining and smoked the cigars, uh, which I said, everybody's going to leave. Nobody left. Everybody yeah. staying and having the cigar with the son, daughter, father uh, afterwards. And it was fantastic. I said, there's really something here. It's, there's no magic on my side to do it. It's put it together. Here's, here's the, how it's done. Now just do it. Enjoy it. And, you know, maybe get the next generation to enjoy a cigar with your father. You know, you'd have, you have a, a girl that was there with the father. And... Um, 
you could see she doesn't even know about cigars. She's just trying to hold it right or whatever. And you go up to her and you give her a couple of tips or whatever. And then fast forward the next year, there she is again. So she didn't say, I'm never doing that again. She's there again. And I say, is it just once a year? And she said, no, I had a cigar with him on his birthday. And I had a cigar for another occasion that was there. And I really enjoy it. And maybe we get the next people to come in and we can create new cigar smokers. That's another key is that you're bringing in new people into it because realistically, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a product that just anecdotally, you know, going around to different shops and seeing and hanging out in lounges and things like that, you know, it's not, unheard of that sometimes i'm the youngest one in the room and i'm 42 you know so realistically we gotta we gotta be thinking you know who's coming up behind me you know and so no i I, that's another reason i really like that event but see uh, you also get creative with other types of events to where it's not even an in-person thing like for example you just did the cigar school promotion where you bought the packs online and you know, then you sent the you. It was a live event that you guys did on, I think, YouTube or something. Yeah. But then now you can just send the link and people. That's a That's an event as well, because, you know, it, it's yeah. One time it's live and everybody's kind of coming together. But you can even that's an event you can do in perpetuity because you have that link already. And, you know, yeah, it's a one time event for that person, but they can bring their buddies together and they can all sit around and do it took a long time to figure, let me dare do this online. And and COVID had a big part of that thought process because that's when you started seeing a lot of this people doing in Zooms and stuff. And before we did that that event for probably 10 years, Thursday nights would would always be a charity event after hours that when somebody said, uh, you know, we're having this charity thing where you give us a box of cigars for a charity. And I'd give the box of cigars. And one time I was at the charity event and the guy picked up the box of cigars and he said, he's looking at a piece of paper. He says, this is from two brothers cigar store. And somebody in the audience yells, Oh, I hate cigars. And he goes, that's all right. Just give them to somebody. The winner is one, two, three, four. And the guy says, Oh shit. And he hands it to him. And I go, well, that was the worst hundred dollars I ever spent. No shit. And I'm like, wow, what do I do? for that never to happen again. So I created a certificate where I give them the certificate for a cigar tasting parade. And it's after hours on Thursday night and you come up with you and seven of your friends and you come into the store and we smoke a cigar together and I teach you how to light, cut and smoke a cigar. And some people would be new people that never smoked before. And some people would have a mixture of people that thought they knew what they were talking about in there and everybody would learn something would have a few laughs and you know what they did after they bought cigars before they left so it turned in from a loser proposition to a profitable proposition and then i'd look in the lounge a couple of weeks later and there were some of the guys that were never in the store before and uh-huh. I go, wow this is a winner and then seeing it on the zoom you know all of a sudden zoom starts happening and, and you see that People understand how to use this now today. I said, okay, let's do it and um, see what we can get for the amount of people that would be interested in doing such a thing. Well, eight people that we usually host at a time, or maybe 16 if we've got two groups at the same time, it was over 400. And over 400 people doing it. And at the end of it, I said, we have that link. We just recorded it. Let's see if this can still be out there. And because the, the facts are the facts, no matter what. Here's how to light, cut, and smoke a cigar. Here's how Precisely. To, you know, if, uh, if anybody listened to it and you're a regular cigar smoker that's been smoking for years and years, you got some tricks of a cracked cigar and how to stop it from getting worse as it went on. You put a cigar down, you didn't get to it till the next day or something, and it tastes like shit how to relight the cigar so it tastes just as good or better. There's so many things that I've learned along the way, and I'm just sharing and sharing these stuff. So this is out there, and, uh, you know, again, it's to help the cigar consumer enjoy cigars more than they ever did before. And if we can do that as a, as a world, we can get more people and new people 
to smoke cigars because there is the worry, and I see it on the show, on our show, and they laugh at me, but you have other options today of cigar smoking. One of the options is people are vaping. Uh, that didn't exist back when I was 25 years old, start, start smoking. Legalized marijuana. I believe that, you know, if we look at cigars as a relaxation tool, marijuana to a lot of people is the relaxation tool, too. We're losing out to some of these people. That's my argument that ends up happening because there's less cigar smokers this year than there were last year. So, you know, I wanted to go the other way. Around. To your point about marijuana, I don't, I, you know, I can see, I, I see where your Jonathan and some of the others come from, and I see where you're coming from. Yeah. The only thing I'll add to that is in my experience in, in uh, the, the dating world, there are so many women that I've encountered that either uh, turn their nose up at, at my cigars and don't, and, you know, don't want anything to do with the fact that I smoke cigars or, you know, have a, have a problem with, with smoking, but yet they're all about, you know, they'll, they'll flat out say, Oh yeah, I use marijuana. So for whatever reason, smoking marijuana is perfectly okay to some of these ladies, but yet the fact that I'm sitting out on my patio and having a cigar is just mind blowing. And they're smoking their marijuana inside their houses and, and, and everything else. And I'm like, how is this remotely different? You know, the marijuana thing is way worse. It's altering your, your brain and the, well, the and you're inhaling that right. and everything. And you're yeah, inhaling exactly. it, but not for whatever reason. Yeah, it, it it's uh, they're not educated enough, and and the industry's done a poor job of educating um, cigars. You know, and that's another thing of all these years of cigar school. Um, why isn't that copied? Why doesn't every retailer have cigar school within their their stores and stuff? I will say, so I want to give a shout out to a St. Louis shop, the Hill Cigar Company. Uh, they recently had a new owner take over Tron and Tron is now doing, he's done one of each of them so far and he's making it a monthly thing. He does uh, Stogies 101. So if you've never had a cigar or you're new to cigars, you go in and they'll sit down and they do a 101 class on cigars, but they're also doing pipes 101 because wow. they've got a lady there that she loves pipes. And so she'll teach you all about how to how to use a pipe, keep a pipe going and smoke a pipe. And I, I'll be honest, I don't really know anything about pipes. You know, I've, I've never attempted a pipe before. And it just seems like a lot of work to me to the point that I'm thinking I'm like, you know, one of these days I'm going to go over and take that pipe class just because. And so so I want to give them a shout out because they're they're Beautiful. doing that. Beautiful. And if you're a retailer and you say you, I wouldn't know how to do the cigar school. You sign up for the cigar school on two guys, cigars.com or the cigar authority, do it. You'll get a few cigars, a lighter and a cutter, and you're off and roll and you watch the cigar school, take some notes and figure it out for your store or for however you want to do it, because I'm giving you the information. It's there. Steal it, please. Uh, and let's make the cigar industry better. For sure. For yeah. sure. And then just taking it one more level, obviously you have your anniversary dinner, which I went to that in 22. Yeah. And then that, that has evolved into the new England cigar expo uh, last year. And then now this year, and uh, I'll see you in September. Really? And oh, good. Uh, I, I will see you in September. And so uh, I, you know what I hate though, I hate you coming up. Like you came up, that was two years ago. And I yeah. just don't have enough time to spend with you. If you come up during that, I feel terrible, but if I don't spend worry about a minute it. with 500 people, that's 500 minutes, and we're not. I even, get it. This I, is not the time to. You were incredibly gracious two years ago to give me the the uh, what was that? Was that Friday after? I think your event was Thursday, and I think oh, Friday right, we hung out or whatever. I'm all yours. If you can stay another extra day, I'm all. I'm going to be up there Wednesday uh, through Monday. I leave Monday evening. Uh, okay. from from the airport. So, beautiful, um, beautiful. so yeah. And if you need help setting up and everything, I mean, I got nothing going on. So, beautiful. I mean, you can use me for labor too. So, whatever. Come on. I don't care. Come on. There's plenty of spots for sure. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, but uh, it's going to be easy. And I spent a lot more this year uh, because I could see where the holes were. We all worked too hard. And um, so we hired 
uh, tens of thousands of dollars extra of hired people that that's their job. I can't have Jonathan building the wrestling ring. There won't be a wrestling <laughs> this year anyway, but he built True. it because he showed up late. All kinds of shit that went that went bad. Nobody you know, knows it, but we know it. It's a big event, and things you know are going to go sideways. But uh, at least based off what I heard from everybody that went last year, they uh, no nobody noticed. Nobody had right. any sort right. of bad experience as a result of anything. So it all worked out in the end. Yeah. But we, um, we kept a lot of secrets, which was good. So you didn't know what didn't happen because you didn't know what was going to happen. There you go. It's yeah. it works out well. But my <laughs> question with that. And this is something that I've thought about with multi vendor events and things of that nature. When I was at your anniversary party two years ago, um, you had what 17 manufacturers in one room. I feel like something like that. Yeah. 15 to 17 manufacturers in one room. And it didn't seem like it turned into an ego competition. It didn't seem like you had uh, people you know, getting competitive with one another in the room and trying to like one up and everything else. It seemed like everybody was, was, was in a great mood and camaraderie and, and all together. And um, how hard is that to wrangle? You know, they don't want to, they never want to do multi vendor events, the manufacturers. Yes. They'll send their reps to do with the stuff, but the key players, which I kind of demand, uh, if you're going to take one of the spots, every manufacturer wants to do our events because we do a good job at doing the events, but it requires the key person for the company to be there because that's what I want them to I, I want them. And if they don't want to, that's okay. Uh, there's other people that should end up wanting it, wanting in the, that spot. And, you know, you like to say the whole world is beautiful and everybody loves each other in the cigar industry, but that's not the case either. They're so, competitors. Right. I get it. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it's a, um, where are we going to sit this, you know, just like a bad wedding or something, <laughs> keep this person away from that person or something. But I'll tell you, they put everything aside at that point. And I got them all up on the stage at the same time. And they're all holding hands and raising the thing. And, you know, when, when I had the store in Massachusetts and we were going to be taxed in that state, the first state that was going to be taxing cigars, I went to every retailer and I said, listen, we've got to get together and we got to fight this together. And they said, get the fuck out of my store. You are the aggressive retailer that's always promoting and marketing yourself and all this. I said, hate me after it's over. But right now, let's get together. Let's fight this thing. And then you can hate me after. Actually, I'm not a bad guy. And I'd help you compete against me if you ever want to. But, you know, let's get together to it. And they didn't do it. And when it comes to things like FDA, the industry gets together and says, you know, I don't like this guy he's stealing my shelf space and he's, he's aggressive or whatever, but FDA is here. We have a lot to fight. We all got together and then they go their ways. And sometimes it get, the, the issues get mended. They say, you know what? He is a nice guy because frankly, they all are nice guys, but yeah. they're competitive with each other in the business and stuff, if, if we're carrying their brand in our store, we're, they're nice people. So, you know, I, and I know some of these people and I go, you don't like so-and-so? No, I don't. They go, he's a really nice guy. And later on, you get to know he's a real nice guy, you know, and let's get along and let's um, certainly fight when we, we have enough enemies that we don't have to be enemies within. And that goes for podcasters. You're a podcaster and I'm a podcaster. You come onto the scene and you're kind of joking around with the cigar authority. I fucking loved it. And I embraced yeah. it. I and and I got a problem with nobody's podcast. I listen to every show you do. I try to listen to everybody's show. It's all good for our industry. You know, um, there, there was uh somebody ends up throwing a dig or something to me, and then I end up seeing them at the trade show and I go right up to them. And they're nice guys. They throw a little dig in or whatever and ends up, okay, if it's for fun. But I don't think there's any malicious, you know, oh, I hope to take down the Cigar Authority, those bastards, or fucking Dave, a two-guy smoke shop, I'm going to put him out of business. I sure hope there isn't because I don't want to do that to anybody myself. It, it, it's a small world and it's an even smaller industry. I mean, like, why, there's no need for that. No, there's plenty to eat, and let's have fun doing it. 
And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm this, next year will be 40 years, 40 years in the cigar industry. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. And I don't need for anything anymore. Um, you know, I'm, I, I want to promote and help the cigar industry, which, of course, in turn ends up helping me. Um, but it's, it's for the greater good, to be honest with you, at this point in my life. Uh, I, I'm not struggling anymore. I had my times where I struggled. It's behind me now. So let me help the industry, which will in turn, rising tides raise all ships, right? So if for I sure. everybody grow, I'm going to grow along with them. So uh, it's honestly how I feel. There you go. Well, um, and your book again, real quick, just to give a quick plug. It's David for versus Goliath, How to Compete and Beat the Online Giant by David Garofalo. You can go to davidgarofalo.com. You'll see it there. Or if you want to support the big online guys, you can go to Amazon. They sell it. Barnesandnoble.com sells it. Bookstores and things like that. Or go to David Garofalo. I'll tell you, Amazon sells it sometimes cheaper than davidgarofalo.com because that's their go-to that's yeah. how do they do what they do they lower the price a little online guys lower the price so it's a little cheaper to buy from them i would rather support my local brick and mortar retailer i say it on the cigar authority yet i have an online presence myself that if they don't have it sure come to me but i would rather that you go to your brick and mortar store and support them and that's the truth and I would hope that that would happen around New Hampshire, where I am, that they would do it. But some people buy online. Just raise the skin the cat. That is what the book is all about. We're going to do things that they can't do. They can lower the price. So let's not do that. Yeah. Let's come up with creative ideas. And if you can't think of them, here's a book of 100 of them. Uh, and that's not just for cigar stores. If you own a hairdressing salon, a bakery, or whatever, that's what's in the book. But all the stories in the book a really two guys smoke shop because that's what I've done now for 40 years, right? I haven't done anything else. So there's, it, 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 talk, it talks in a different way of a barber shop and different events happen in different places. They're proven promotions, which means I did them all. And I got a whole bunch that didn't work. If you want that encyclopedia, <laughs> these are the ones that worked. And uh, it, it's an easy read. Again, it's, it's me writing it. So it's, it's very easy to read. It's only two pages per promotion that happens and you read the promotion, you tweak it your way and you come up with, you know, the first one that's on there is on there on purpose. Guess how many jelly beans are in the jar? You know, the oldest promotion in the world. Yeah. Go in and jelly beans would be there. So in my case, it was cigar beans. So we put mm. a whole bunch of cigar beans in a big giant jar and guess how many cigar beans are in there. If you're at hair salon, it can be bobby pins. If you're a bakery, it can be donuts. It can be whatever the hell it ends up doing. But just to give get you in the mindset of it doesn't matter what I'm talking about. Mine happen to be all cigars, and I'm not talking about cigars within it. But I try to go creative and come up with different things that it would work on. Whatever your business is, and I'm not talking to just cigar shop owners here, but whatever you've got, there's something there if, if you're a uh, – shop owner if you're the manager of a store if you work for a store i think you end up getting a raise at the end of this thing where you go to your owner of your store and say i got this idea instead of buy three get one free let's do the powerball just went up to a billion dollars yeah. let's do this and the guy says oh my god we never sold so many cigars um you know or you're getting the brands that you can't sell and you say okay this is a five dollar table we're selling these cigars at five dollars no matter what the owner of your shop is losing money on every single cigar he, he, that he sells. That's not the way to run a business. And you ain't getting a raise working for a company that's doing that easy. He's going to ask for a raise and he's going to say there's no money. Of course there's no money because he's selling cigars for $5 that, he, that are supposed to be $15. But yeah. could be buy any two of these and get a chance to win a billion dollars. And then he's giving $2 away instead of $15 or whatever crazy amount that, that's happening there. Look at it, and maybe you can help the store that you work at, or maybe that you help the store owner that you're friendly with. And you hope that you can help him and say, you know, I got an idea. Uh, why don't we do a father and son cigar dinner? And this is what we can do, and this is how we can do it. And he says, that's a good idea, because he, everybody's mind, I thought everybody was the same, but we all think the same way, right? It wasn't long ago that I realized that my mind works differently 
than other people's minds. I thought we were all the same. And when I'm at home and my wife will tell you, I click the wrong button on the channel thing on the TV and the TV goes to snow and I'm clicking every friggin' button trying to get it back to where it was and I cannot make the TV go back on. What does it matter with you? And then she hits the button and the TV goes back on. I go, well, I don't know what's wrong with me, but for whatever reason, my mind doesn't work like that. Computer, yeah. If the computer goes down right now, I have to scream out somebody's name. <laughs> because I don't know what to do. My mind doesn't work like that. But yet I can figure out a way to get somebody to come into the cigar shop that normally would not come into the cigar shop. At the uh, Expo last year, midget wrestling. What the hell does that have to do with cigar <laughs> smoke? And this year is the world's strongest man competition. What does that have to be? I'm bringing people from outside the industry in. Maybe people are into the strongest man competition. And maybe a strongest man would like to have a cigar. Maybe there's a good chance of that. We'll see. I don't know. You're going to know if it works out so well that the same event happens twice. There you go. If that happens twice, you say, I think you got I think that was I like it. I like it a lot. I still am kicking myself for missing the uh, midget wrestling, though. I have Bill to admit. Burr. And Bill, Bill Burr. Burr. Yeah. So how does that end up happening at Bill Burr? Because Bill Burr heard that we have a midget wrestling and that uh, he can smoke cigars while he's there. And it was he said, I want to go to this. He didn't say, <laughs> how much are you going to pay me for this because I want a payday. He wanted to attend. If I, I made Bill Burr want to attend an event, yeah, to be there. Mark Henry wants to come to our event that we're having because he was the world's strongest man before. He's a cigar smoker. He's a WWE Hall of Famer, and he actually wants to come to our event. So we're going to have him come there along with. Hopefully, we got some surprise ideas. Nobody has confirmed yet. I wouldn't tell you if they did. But um, that's what we're trying to do, bring other people in, because they're really good for business. Bill Burr, on his podcast, which is much bigger than our podcast combined, much, much, he talks about it on his show of how great the cigar our event was. He doesn't talk about Two Guys Smoke Shop. He doesn't talk um, of me, but he said the cigar event. And he loves cigars, and he says he loves cigars, as does Joe Rogan. Yeah. And all these other people. It, it's really good really really good for our industry no it is and uh, to your point about bill burr coming you know that being such a surprise it kind of has made it to where now you know i'm sitting here coming to this year's expo and i'm sitting here going who is going to show up it 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 has that (laughs) mystery aspect to where now i am i run the risk of major disappointment because i'm not saying anybody's coming i i have i would like some surprise people to show up, but they might not show up at all. But Mark Henry's a good get, is. though, too. I mean, I've yeah. got a friend of mine who's big into wrestling, and he's jealous. And then I've got, uh, uh, you know, and then I I remember, you know, watching. Uh, it's been a minute since I've watched professional wrestling. But uh, back when Mark Henry was in the WWE, I, I remember watching him compete. You know, and everything. So, I mean, you know, it, it's going to be cool. Mm. Even if, you know, I'm not diminishing Mark Henry by any means. I'm yeah. just saying that, you know, it kind of has, you know, the way you've done this has kind of created this atmosphere of like, you never know what's going to happen. So you have to be there in case, you know, yeah. you create that, fo- you create that FOMO. Yeah, you're right. Right. So it, that's it, great. It's, it was, uh, you know, last year was a very different one from my anniversary party. It went from a beautiful function hall uh, to a tent in the middle of nowhere um, that everybody was like, it was, it was a big pushback because it, it was elevated to this beautiful, elegant thing down to dirt floor in a tent. But it was that or it went away. Yeah. So that, there well, was adding on to that and saying, how do we make that better? What do we do from, from that point? We learned issues that happened. It should be even better this year, I hope. Uh, it certainly looks like we took care of some problems, uh, staffing problems, which was was a big thing. And uh, we go from there. And the year after that, uh, and I certainly hope there's a year after that, because it's my 40th anniversary, which should be a big one. Yeah, uh, for sure. I need, I need to blow that up. So uh, 
as I'm working on this one, believe me, we're, we're one step even ahead looking at the next year, if that ends up happening, which means the place itself is going to want to have us back because we lost the place two years before. Yeah. Then, we lost, then we had the place you went to. And after that one time we did the event, they said, yeah, never again. I'll be honest, after being at that event two years ago, it doesn't surprise me that they right. said that. Because right. I remember distinctly at one point looking at the room and seeing the haze of cigar smoke. And I'm thinking, I know that they, that Mr. Jonathan told me that they've got cleaners coming in to take care of this right away. And I'm thinking, this is going to be a hard job. Right. So, you know, so I get it. But, you know, uh, it sounds like at least that the place you had it last year, um, obviously they welcomed you back again this year. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, that's nice. Right. No, it's, it's a plus one four. We were lucky before the last years, we were at a place for 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, it was called the Burroughs in Havel, Massachusetts. And um, years before that place, we were bouncing around year after year, couldn't find a place. We found the Burroughs and they actually embraced it. They liked it. And we ended up doing almost 20 years, I believe, with them. So uh, here we are again of, could this be the new home and stay there for years and years? I hope so. Although it is a lot tougher uh, in a tent as opposed to a place that locks up at night and you could free get it ready. And, you know, you don't, you're worrying about weather. Uh, yeah. All the aspects that go along with that. But uh, honestly, nobody wants it. We're cigar smokers. And like you said, uh, to the marijuana smoking ladies out there, um, they hate it. And uh, most people do. Most people hate what we enjoy so much. And uh, we need to have um, major events like that to actually show people that here we are and we're all enjoying ourselves and we stay amongst ourselves. And, uh, you know, maybe somebody takes a peek in and says, I think I want to be part of that community. Uh, that's what we need to end up having. For sure, for sure. Well, why don't we go ahead and do the uh, Billiger uh, Entertainment Report now? Cool. It's time for the Billiger Cigars Entertainment Report, brought to you by Billiger. <laughs> Billiger Cigars, one of the leading cigar and cigarello manufacturers in the world, founded in 1888 and still family-owned and operated. Head over to VilligerCigars.com and check the store locator to find a shop near you that carries them. We guarantee that Billiger Cigars will be a wonderful addition to your humidor and cigar rotation. So, Dave, have you been watching anything lately? So, I'm uh, I'm the biggest joke of the family. I've always been that way. Of uh, I live in the past in a big way. Um, my daughter, when I was little, says, "Why do you watch gray TV?" Which meant <laughs> black and white TV at the time. And that's when she was little, and here, here she is, thirty years old now. And I still do that. I watch old stuff. Uh, and I, I multitask. I'm doing other things at the same time all, all the time. Uh, my biggest kick that I've been on probably a good five, six months or so now, it's been um, Perry Mason. Okay. Uh, Perry Mason stuff. And wouldn't you know it? Of, Raymond uh, Burr. Yeah. How TV yeah. is today. Um, there's two stations way in the, in the 1400s of um, these oddball weird stations that play it all the time. It's almost like Perry Mason stations. There you uh, go. They have some other things, but the most most of it is there. So I can go Perry Mason all day long if I, if I want. <clears throat> but uh, that's been my go-to over the years. It's been you know all kinds of different stuff like that. Um, as far as more modern day, what's happening today? Um, the Final episodes of Curb Your Enthusiasm are on now. So I'm watching the last season. I've seen every season uh, as it has gone on, but here it is, the, the end of it. And I was a Seinfeld fan to begin with. I like Larry Davis type type of humor anyway. So uh, I've, been, I've been catching that. And there's only maybe about five or six left after that. And then... Uh, I got to go back. I'll probably wait about 30 years and then stop watching that. <laughs> I don't know. There you go. I know HBO did, uh, I think, two seasons of a, a newer version of Perry Mason. It's set back in like the old, like, oh, God, it's set a ways back. But um, 
but yeah, there's some new Perry Mason on HBO if you're looking for more Perry Mason. Hey, I can't think of um, the name of the show, which was only one season, I believe, of it. Um, Poker Face. You, you were, that? yeah, with the redhead gal. Yes. Yeah. Um, that was very much like Columbo type of thing, which I, which is another one I've, I've seen every episode 20 times now. At this point, I've binged that for years. Um, and then um, COVID came and it stopped being done and it said it was going to be redone. But that was actually very good that I would, you know, waiting for the next season that has never happened. I hope it ends up uh, coming out. But they said they were going to redo that thing and would see it again soon. But I don't know. Um, I've been kind of busy this week, so I haven't watched a lot, but I did manage to make it. And I mentioned this to Jonathan on Tuesday's show. I did manage to make it to the theater, um, on Sunday. They, uh, they ran, um, the original Godfather yeah, at the movie nice. theater. And so I went and watched that. And, um, it, it's just, it, I, I don't know if you heard the episode I did with Noah, did. where we went over our top 10 gangster movies. What yeah. are some of your favorite gangster movies? Uh, certainly the Godfather two is first, then the Godfather one. Okay. Um, you know, uh, wise guys. Um, do you know, do you remember wise guys, the movie wise guys? I don't. So it was, um, captain Lou Albano was actually in it, <laughs> along with Joe. Um, was Joe Pesci? I think Joe Pesci was in it. Um, like Saturday night live guys from back in the past. Uh, it was a comedy gangster movie that was fantastic and nobody ever talks about but see if you can dig that up wise guys i'll have to look for that and um th that was really good um i i actually watch um like youtube stuff of all the gangster stuff real gangster stuff um the first two guys smoke shop um was in some of them massachusetts and um um the area that I was in was very mob controlled. Whitey Bulger, you know the story of Whitey Bulger? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where he was. These okay. were my customers in 1985 when I opened. The thing is, <laughs> I didn't know that they were my customers, who they were, nor did I know, uh, did they uh, realize that I was doing halfway decent or they would have robbed me because they robbed <laughs> the So I got lucky when it came to that. But, um, you know, I, I follow real uh the gangster stuff that um you know the real gangster stuff as opposed to the movies but i like when the movies come out of the actual guy uh which a lot has come out with whitey bulger over the years different movies um uh, the black mask um and different movies that came out with him um you know uh i i like um you know looking into um th those channels that that play um, the stories of the real people, you know, historical um, of, of the real guy instead of the, the make believe stuff, unless it's done really good. For sure. Yeah. Did you uh, ever, I don't know if you have Paramount Plus or if you know anybody that has, I mean, I could share my login if you want it, but um, uh, there's a show on there called The Offer. I saw and it. Great. Did you see it? Yeah, I saw all the, did you see it? Uh, I have not. It's on my list and I was going to so ask you fabulous. to see it. So I warn you, you got to get past uh, the first 30 minutes. Okay. I told my mother, who loves that kind of stuff, watch it. And she shut it off after about 20 minutes. She says, I hate it. I said, you are going to love it so much because it's the real story of the Godfather. But the guy that did the Godfather was actually the producer of Hogan's Heroes. <laughs> and that's why they said, this guy, this is going nowhere. Yeah. And... Hogan's Heroes mixed in with it at the beginning. And then Real Gangsters, they the, um, were against the movie. Um, the uh, the Italian-American League or something was against it. It is a great series. It's like six or eight episodes. Uh, and it was fantastic. One of the best things uh, that I could tell you. If, if you're a Godfather fan, the making of the Godfather, the, the twists and turns that happened along the way, uh, even to the point of the horse in the bed, they said, my God, this looks so realistic. That's because it was real. Oh, God. <laughs> because they couldn't get it to look good. And the guy says, 
and they took a dead horse and they cut his head off and then the you know different things like that and then what happened here in the back story and maybe it was embellished i don't know about yeah it. it's a great story you have to see it it's fabulous you know now that you say that having just seen that this past sunday and on the big screen right in front of me it's like no that that did look real now that you say that so but yeah 1970 i mean yeah yeah but that's because it was real yeah, yeah i'll be damned <laughs> all right um well um i uh i don't have a pinky's fun fact for this week uh i sat down with her uh yesterday and we recorded a whole bunch more so um i need to get those prepped and ready so unfortunately there's no pinky fun fact for for this week so okay. we'll we'll hear about uh now we'll, now we'll hear about my monthly cigars this would normally be the time that I give some information about My Monthly Cigars, but I've hired that out this week, so take it away. My Monthly Cigars is a premium cigar subscription service. It comes in a variety of different size boxes at affordable prices. Use offer code PULPIT and get free shipping on your first box and 20% off any items in the online store at MyMonthlyCigars.com. That's offer code PULPIT. Thanks. And while you guys are over there, make sure you pick up the fucking good coffee. That's what I've got going on right now in my little uh, Here we little, go. little tumbler there. Um, is, the cat, is the cat out of the bag of his special thing coming out? The fucking good cigar? Yes. It is indeed. So All while right. you're over there at the website. Should be very soon, right? I would think so. And I know yeah. he's got a sign up on his, uh, on his website that you can uh, sign up to get the information as to how to pre-order that. So make sure you do that because, uh, you know, you don't want to be a fucker. You want to you want to drink and smoke fucking good. And you don't want FOMO. You don't want to miss this. And then you say, I should have bought some of these things. You For sure. Talk. It's going to be a, a limited deal. Yes. So make sure you sign up for that. Um, well, in terms of the socials, I'm on Instagram at the Cigar Pulpit. I'm on uh, Facebook where we have the Pulpit Parishioners group. I'm on Twitter slash X. YouTube where you can watch this. And then, guys, um, I made an announcement this week. I, I sat down and talked with Ken from Ash and Ale in Palm Coast, Florida on Tuesday. And we are very near bumping the the, the ceiling of uh, attendance at Pulpit Fest this year. So make sure you get uh, over to Eventbrite, B-R-I-T-E, Eventbrite.com, and sign up for that. We need a headcount. Um, so there's, there's a limited amount of spots available. So if you're looking at coming to pulpit fest, you're going to want to make sure you, uh, sign up and get those tickets so that we know that you're, you're attending. And that way we can have an appropriate number of chairs and things of that number, you know, available and, uh, giveaways and that kind of stuff, but make sure you sign up for that. So, and Dave, where can people follow you? Uh, I, I think I'm David Garofalo on social media. Am I? I think think i know you're on facebook and i know that's that on twitter i think you're two guys is it two guys smoke or two guys smokes smoke shop i it's two guys if you if you go if you go on instagram and you search the number two guys it should bring you up on yeah. there i don't and know then, I, uh, I try to post something once or twice a day i'm terrible at communication with when somebody ends up you know looking to have a conversation on there uh i don't know you were promoting an ashtray uh just yesterday i think i saw yes i, I throw stuff up there but my daughter tells me i'm supposed to be social which is if somebody writes something i'm supposed to respond back but there's not enough hours in a day i got potato chips to eat i got coffee <laughs> drink and cigars to smoke i don't have enough time to end up doing it that's why i do the the, the podcast and to get it all out uh on the podcast uh and uh still the ash holes too so, yeah i was gonna say uh, you're on you got yeah, the cigar I, authority I, I, every saturday for, uh, i wish you lived up here i wish you were here um, <laughs> 10 more years buddy and then i have the ability I, to move. <laughs> well, I, gotta, I gotta make it 10 more years there you go yeah. um yeah i i I've got my son locally, so I, I got yeah. he turns eight in May, so ten All more right. years, and then I can consider moving. But, um, but yeah, no, you're on the Cigar Authority every Saturday. You've got the after show on Wednesdays, and then the Ash Holds on Tuesdays. Yeah, so yeah, that's enough, right? And then you're busy. I am jumping in here. Uh, when when is this going to air? Uh, tomorrow. 
Wow. Friday. <laughs> this is my cigar authority week between having Mr. Jonathan All on right, Tuesday. So I'm, I'm get, I'm you on Friday. Over, overdone, right? There's enough. Nah, throwing an editorial whatever. here and there on top of it is like. All right, it's enough of fucking David Garoppolo. Yeah, you're always fun to talk to. You always have something interesting to talk about. And, you know, back, I mean, my God, you know, I, I think back to that Friday after the uh, anniversary dinner in 22, and I just sat in your office with you and uh, smoking cigars, and you're just a, just a, just a encyclopedia of industry knowledge. I mean, it's just so many stories and things of that nature that you can, you can just rattle off the top of your head. And it's just, it's super entertaining and enjoying. So I, I appreciate your time. Thank you. And I got to get it out before I start forgetting things. I'm going to get to that age where uh, I'm going to start uh, making up stories and forgetting who I am or whatever. So, you need uh, to write another book. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I had, I had started round two. Yeah. Uh, um, David versus Goliath round two. And uh, it started going in a certain direction. And I go, that's not where I wanted to go. Rip that up. I mean, a cigar industry historical kind of thing, like start, you know, well, you my know, 40 years in the industry, my books. perspective. So I, I set up last year at the expo, which was the Cigar Hall of Fame. Yeah. It's only one year that's been in. There's only three inductees into the Hall of Fame so far. But that is where these stories are going to lie of the cigar brands, it's not people, it's cigar brands. So uh, it never was done. I, I said it to people before. Um, that are, are better um, writers and stuff than me, that different people I've said, this is what needs to be done. This is, somebody has to do it. It was never done. And uh, last year I'm like, you know what? Nobody's going to do it. Let me at least start this thing. So the Hall of Fame began. Uh, there's three brands inducted. You can go to thecigarhalloffame.com and you'll see the three inductees into it. There'll be three more that you'll witness uh, that'll happen in front of you uh, at the expo. Uh, that's where it lives right now. That it'll it it's going to happen at the expo. But I hope as it builds on that it becomes its own Hall of Fame night, and that people go just to the Hall of Fame to see the next inductees as time goes on, and these stories can be there because people like uh, like me, like Eric Newman, who knows a lot of these stories. Cuesta Ray was one of the ones that were inducted in there. And um, he's got so many stories to tell. Um, Cuban brands that you, you may not even know, Cabanas, that doesn't even exist really, uh, was, was the first Cuban brand. That was one that was inducted into the Hall of Fame. And Davidoff, which started off as a Cuban cigar and a story behind there. But there'll be three new ones that'll happen this year. Um, and they'll all connect in a certain way, reason for that. And then give different thoughts along the way. I actually have the five or six years already planned of what it should be. And, um, you know, that, that's where that is going to be as far as it is to somebody to tell you um, a book of how to um, um, do things to tobacco and stuff. It's not my forte by any means. This. You know, uh, it's it's like blending tobacco that um, all of it does it for United Cigars. I never thought that I was good enough to be able to do it. I'd be sitting with these master blenders and saying, well, how about if you do this? And they'd shake their head and I'd make them do it to me anyway. Then I'd see that they were right and I'm wrong. And I go, <laughs> you know, let me let me step back and know, you know, where, where, where my life is in this industry. I'm a cigar retailer, a brick and mortar cigar retailer. That's who I am. Um, I get to see the consumer every day and, and know, uh, and that's why I was passionate about where the prices were going and why I ended up uh, making that, that editorial. Uh, I, I want what's best for the cigar industry. And I don't think I'm the guy to write the book and tell you how um, cigars are blended or anything like that. There's, there's certainly better people than that. Yeah, but I think your memoirs, you know, 40 years in the cigar industry, things you've seen, things you've experienced, I think that'd be a really good sound. Uh, I don't know. I, I think about it. You know, right. I, I got spare time. I don't know where, but uh, <laughs> I tried to do these little pet projects. But um, David vs. Goliath was written that I was doing the cigar book for years and years and years, and it was on my on my computer, right on my desk. And every once in a while I'd go in and write something, but I'd go back and read what I wrote. 
and time had gone by and I hated it and I started again and again and again and never went anywhere. David versus Goliath, I wrote in 30 days. There you go. Uh, totally, you know, I, I started uh, just typing and just kept going and cleaned it up after and just went through it because it was what I lived really. So maybe that would work of what I lived in the cigar industry, but who cares, right? Oh, don't don't, don't say yeah. that. Don't say that. I know there's a lot of people that would care. Like yeah. I said, I had a wonderful time sitting in your office just listening to stories just that one day. I mean, you put it all in a book. I mean, yeah, it 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 could it would sell. You'd yeah. you'd sell some copies. All right. I'm just saying. So okay. well, Dave. Thank you so much for taking time out today. I really do appreciate it. I know you got other things to do and everything, but uh, it, it, it means a lot. I do appreciate it. All right. My pleasure. Thank you. Well, guys, this has been another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm Nick. I'm Dave. Everybody stay safe and stay smoky. <laughs> You know, I just realized I didn't talk one damn bit about our cigars. Um, I, I, I really enjoyed the West Tampa Tobacco Black. It's a fantastic cigar. I understand why the prisoners voted 22 cigar of the year for them. And, uh, you know, it's it's just that nice, nice, good flavors to it. Nice, great construction. I really do enjoy it. And you've barely been able to smoke your La Giana 30th. Yes. Uh, I appreciate you not bringing up the butt plug, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I thought for sure that was going to be the topic of the discussion. And I uh, said, oh, we didn't even bring it up. Uh, it's <laughs> very interesting. We're, we're uh, uh, you're going to air this tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Do you have any? We have less than 50 boxes left, which I really am surprised because, as I said, we, we, we came out with a Lancero two years ago. Bad idea on purpose. Uh, let's see what ends up happening with that. Then it was the Fat Fingers last year in, in gloves with cigar. But I said, I think I came up with the worst idea yet. We probably won't sell any of these because who the hell is going to buy this? And uh, the cigar was really good anyway. They all look yeah. good. Um, I still have some of my happens. Lanceros in there. And this one is, uh, I'm... Uh, I'm wondering if by Saturday I could say this is sold out, which would be within one week. I, I wouldn't be surprised because we're at 40 something boxes left as I saw this morning. So uh, maybe if anyone's listening after hours right now and yeah. they, they put us over the edge and uh, sell this thing out. Possibly. Um, I mean, I'll say when, when I heard the announcement of that cigar um, and I saw the picture and it was in the, the little, you know, the yeah. case, and everything i'm th i when i saw the name of it i knew where you guys were going with it or at least i knew i knew where ed and jonathan were going with yes. it i kind of assumed you were probably you said it's a plug on. it's a plug for yeah you could say that but we all know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but my thought i was like looking at the picture and i'm thinking okay these are going to be little like you know petite corona kind of things like that and then but then when you announce it's like a five by 58 yeah i mean Jonathan said it was the right size. I don't know. He would know best. He would know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. Well, no, that's great. I, uh, I, I, like I said, I've still got some of my Lanceros in there um, and every and all that. So, no, that's awesome that it's selling so quick. So, guys, get yourself some butt plugs. <laughs>